They thought they were in control. They thought that she was just a helpless child, but when their captive reveals her true nature, the hunters become the hunted. Today, we're sinking our teeth into the terrifying tale of Abigail, where a kidnapping goes horribly wrong and the darkness is unleashed on this episode of Ringside Review. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. Vampire movies haven't been very good lately. It seems like it's been quite a while since we've had a really good one, but maybe Abigail can change that. It was released in 2024 as a Radio Silence production. Uh, this includes Matt Bettinelli Open, Tyler Gillette, and producer Chad Vallea. The movie stars Alicia Ware in the titular role of Abigail, a young ballet dancer with a dark secret. Melissa Barrera, Dan Stevens, and Catherine Newton play members of the criminal group who abduct Abigail, while Will Catlett, Kevin Durand, Angus Cloud, and Giancarlo Esposito round out the ensemble cast. Yeah, there's some serious star power here. I was looking forward to this movie as soon as it was announced. I knew the basic premise, but I didn't really know what to expect beyond that. I like what Radio Silence does. I enjoyed their work in the Scream franchise, as well as Ready or Not. So when I heard that they were working on this movie, I was really excited. But there was one thing that bothered me. I wish the trailer didn't give away the fact that Abigail is a vampire. I think that the movie would have played a lot better for me had I not known that. I understand why they did it the way they did for marketing purposes, but still. On that note, grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring for the plot. Abigail, a young ballet dancer, is kidnapped by six criminals and brought to the isolated Wilhelm Manor. Their leader, Lambert, gives them their final instructions before leaving. Watch Abigail for 24 hours, and then they'll each get an equal cut of her father's $50 million ransom. See you in 24 hours, my lovely pack of rats. The group, who all go by aliases to maintain anonymity, includes Joey, a former army medic and recovering addict, Frank, an ex-NYPD detective, Sammy, a thrill-seeking hacker, Rickles, a former marine sniper, Peter, a dim-witted mob enforcer, and Dean, a sociopathic driver. Despite being hesitant to proceed after realizing the target was a child, Joey is assigned to look after Abigail. She shows compassion towards the young girl, sharing that she has a son of her own and vows to keep Abigail safe. Abigail then reveals that her father doesn't actually care about her and won't pay the ransom, even apologizing for what's going to happen to Joey. Joey? Yeah. I'm sorry about what's going to happen to you. Frank, deeply disturbed by Abigail's words, aggressively confronts her and in the process learns that her father is Christophe Lazar, an infamous and powerful crime lord. Dean, after unsuccessfully flirting with Sammy, heads into the basement where he's suddenly attacked by an unseen assailant. His screams draw Sammy to investigate, only to discover Dean's decapitated body. The terrifying realization dawns on the group. Lazar's notoriously brutal enforcer, Valdez, must be inside the house. They try to escape, but the house's security system has locked them in, trapping them. As they desperately search for a way out, Rickles is brutally attacked and killed. The group confronts Abigail, demanding answers, but she transforms into a vampire, revealing her true identity as Valdez. At least Valdez isn't in here. The girl is Valdez, you moron. I thought her name was Abigail. Frank shoots Abigail, but to their horror, her wounds instantly heal. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. The group, now gripped by sheer terror, flees. Frank, Sammy, and Peter return and launch an attack on Abigail using garlic, crucifixes, and other traditional vampire fighting tools, but nothing works. I got him! Sammy, those are f***ing onions. Her superior strength and speed easily overpower them, and she prevents them from staking her through the heart. Joey manages to subdue Abigail with a tranquilizer, and then the team imprisons her, but not before she bites Sammy. 
Upon regaining consciousness, the centuries-old Abigail reveals that she knows their true identities and orchestrated her own kidnapping through Lambert, intending to kill them for harming her father. Joey then realizes that Abigail has murdered dozens of her father's enemies in a desperate attempt to win his love. It's a concept that I think is pretty dang intriguing. Abigail breaks free from her restraints with ease and attacks Frank, but Joey quickly tears wooden planks from a window exposing Abigail to the sunlight, which severely injures her. With only a few hours until the sunset, the group splits up to search for a way out, but Sammy is transformed into a vampire thrall and kills Peter. <laughs> Abigail then commands Sammy to attack Frank and Joey, forcing Joey to make the difficult decision to destroy Sammy with reflected sunlight. Lambert then tricks Frank and Joey into finding the hidden security room where he reveals a shocking truth. Abigail turned him into a vampire years ago as a reward for helping Frank escape Lazar's fury. Frank, desperate, allows Lambert to turn him into a vampire, hoping they can join forces to kill both Abigail and Lazar. However, the moment his transformation is complete, Frank kills Lambert, blaming him for leading him into Abigail's trap. <laughs> Abigail attacks Frank, but he surprises her with his newfound strength and drains her blood, leaving her significantly weakened. Cornered and seemingly out of options, Joey leaves a heartfelt voicemail for her son, apologizing for her years of absence from his life. Frank, now reveling in his newfound power, bites Joey, intending to turn her into his thrall and force her to kill Abigail, and eventually even her own son. However, due to Frank's inexperience with his vampire abilities, Joey's enthrallment fails. Seizing this opportunity, she and Abigail team up to kill Frank. With Joey no longer under Frank's control, Abigail urges her to leave and be a part of her son's life. However, their moment is interrupted by the arrival of Lazar, who immediately threatens Joey. Abigail steps in, defending Joey for being there for her when she needed someone, while Lazar was absent as always. She was here when you weren't. Despite Lazar's anger and disapproval, he eventually relents for Abigail's sake, allowing the injured and exhausted Joey to depart. I think you should leave. The film ends as she exits the house and leaves the property in the very same van they all arrived in. This was a very interesting movie, and to be perfectly honest, I wasn't exactly sure how to feel after it was over. Like, part of me feels like I was expecting more, and part of me feels like I really loved what I was given. But we are going to dive into the positives and negatives in just a moment. But first, I want to mention a few things. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code you can use to save 20% off your entire order. Check it out. All of my merchandise is also available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Andrew Dreamer. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in any way, check out my Patreon page, which I will be updating very soon, so keep an eye out for that. All of the links are down in the description. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the positives of Abigail. Abigail took me on a wild ride, blending genres in a way that kept me in the story pretty much the entire time. The action sequences were intense and well choreographed. The vampire lore was both intriguing and refreshingly unique, and the unexpected twists kept me guessing until the very end. The performances were strong across the board, but Alicia Ware herself stood out, bringing a depth and complexity to her character that I just wasn't really expecting. She was both terrifying and sympathetic, and her motivations were surprisingly nuanced. I, I also appreciated the film's exploration of deeper themes like family, loyalty, and the consequences of our actions. It wasn't just mindless entertainment. It left me with something to think about long after the movie ended. The relationship between Abigail and her father was particularly poignant, highlighting the lengths some will go to earn love and acceptance, even if it means sacrificing their own humanity. The film's visual style was also a highlight for me. The cinematography was beautiful and the use of color and lighting created a haunting atmosphere that perfectly complemented the story. And there was a part of me that really, really liked the fact that they never explicitly stated that Lazar is Dracula. I mean, the clues were there though. You have the, um, the, the dragon symbol on the gate. You hear Swan Lake throughout the film, and there's a line where Lazar even says that he's gone by many names over the years. 
I've gone by many names over the countless years. So, yeah, the dude is Dracula in my mind. Also, the original title of the film was Dracula's Daughter. While I enjoyed the film, overall, there were a few things that didn't quite hit the mark. I'll go back to the Dracula thing. The other part of me wishes that they actually said that Lazar is Dracula. I love the way that they did it, but I think it would have been so cool to see the characters react to learning that this guy is the most famous and infamous vampire of all time. The pacing felt a bit uneven at times, with some scenes dragging on longer than necessary, particularly in the first act. I also felt that certain characters, particularly the male kidnappers, were underdeveloped and could have benefited from more backstory and depth. Their motivations felt somewhat one-dimensional, and I didn't feel as invested in their fates as I was in Abigail's or even Joey's. Additionally, the film's ending left a few loose ends that I would have liked to see resolved, while I appreciated the ambiguity in some respects, I felt that certain plot points were left hanging. It just left me with a few un unanswered questions like, um, what's going to happen to Abigail now? Is her father going to be there for her, or is he just going to kill her? I, I mean, I don't know. Finally, while the film's blend of genres was mostly successful, there were a few moments where the tonal shifts felt a bit jarring. The humor, while occasionally effective, sometimes clashed with the film's darker themes, I just think that those ships could have been a bit smoother, if that makes sense. That honestly just comes down to personal preference, though. Overall, Abigail was a thrilling and thought-provoking film, and I think it lived up to the hype. Despite a few minor flaws, it's a movie that I would recommend to anyone looking for a unique and engaging vampire experience. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely check it out. But that is going to do it for this episode of Ringside Review. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Abigail. Did it live up to your expectations, or what questions did you have by the end of the film? I want to hear from you. Don't forget to check out the links down in the description. Any support would be greatly appreciated, and I am so grateful for the love that you all have shown me since I began this journey. And I want to give you a little update about what's coming this October. This will actually be my third October on YouTube, and I like doing something special for the Halloween season. Last year we looked at the Universal Monster movies, but this year we'll be focusing on my favorite franchise in horror, Halloween. I'm calling it The Shape of Fear, and I'm really excited for it. There will be more details about that soon, but I did want to go ahead and announce it. If you enjoyed this look at Abigail, be sure to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the hard-hitting action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling with Horror.